going to bring in our, our foreign affairs editor, Philip Tell, who's with me uh, here in the studio, because, you know, Philip, we were talking about this earlier. This is the culmination of several years of effort for uh, Sir Richard Branson. You know, he, he spoke about his uh, desire to head into space way back in 2004. Well, I think uh, if Richard Branson uh, is anything like myself, which I'm sure he isn't, but if he is, he would have watched when he was a child a series on television in the UK called Thunderbirds, which took place in space uh, with a company called International Rescue. And I think that series contributed a lot to children wanting to go into space. And of course, then there were all the Apollo missions in the late 60s when uh, Richard Branson was just coming up to the age of 20, uh, where he saw a man walk on the moon for the first time in 1969. So these are all contributing factors that would have given him the idea that maybe he himself one day could go into space. He's a great entrepreneur. He's created all these different companies. He's kept Virgin progressing and evolving all the way down the line since 1970. So what we're seeing now with this plane Philip, taking off... Speak, we're just seeing it taking off behind you there. So. It is like the culmination of like 50 years of work for Richard Branson, something that he's always wanted to do. And as I said earlier, Ronnie was also a fan of Star Trek. So it's no real surprise that he's on board that plane taking off right now with six other people, having the experience of a lifetime going up into space, something he's wanted to do all his life, and off he goes. And who knows what he must be feeling? Who knows what experience he's going to have when he gets up there and he can see the Earth? Just to let you know what's going to happen, uh, this plane is going to travel up to about an altitude of 15 kilometres, and then in the middle there is a vehicle called Unity, which... Uh, is going to detach from the main plane, and that will carry on travelling up to about 90 kilometres above the Earth, fired by its own rocket, which will then ignite once it is let loose from this main plane. And then the astronauts will experience weightlessness. And that will bring forward, as Daniel Brown was just telling us, that feeling of maybe nausea, wanting to be sick because you're feeling in a position that y y you never felt before. And there is the thrust power also uh, from uh, the Unity plane, which is quite something that's going to throw you back in your seats when it's actually going to take off and take you up uh, into space, those 90 kilometres into space. And 90 kilometres is really the limit where you're no longer on Earth, but you're in space. And it's from there onwards that you'll be in the dark. You will get... You will be hit, I think, also by the silence that you hear in space. That is something that us Earthlings are not used to. So there will be the silence and there will be uh, the view of Earth and the stars. And I think all of that is, as they've been saying all the way down the line, is something you will never experience until you actually get into space to see it you're with your own eyes. I mean, I think this is uh, exciting times, uh, as, as we've been saying uh, throughout this. Uh, Daniel, if I bring you back...